Welcome back to the channel, you desert bandits. Today we're going to be farming tens of thousands of deniers in Bannerlord here in the desert. I'm going to go over and break down exactly how this works right now. We're essentially going to become a prison trade here in the Azurai deserts because this is where prisoners are actually the most valuable in the game and they're very lightly armored so they're very easy to kill. But that's actually part of the problem. We don't want to kill them. We only want to knock them unconscious so we can take them all prisoner. So if I open up the encyclopedia tab and then I type in Azurai recruit, this is going to show me the leveling up process for Azurai recruits. And Azurai recruits can be hired in any town or city in the Azurai desert kingdom. Just go to recruit troops and as you can see they only cost 20 gold per soldier. But the reason we're using Azurai recruits specifically is because they actually upgrade into the Azurai tribesmen. And then after that, you get a choice and you can upgrade them specifically into the Azurai footmen. It won't take you long to train them and level them up, by the way, because these are still low tier troops. But the reason we want Azurai footmen specifically for this technique is because if you look at their weaponry, they use the Heavy Horseman's Mace. This is a one-handed mace weapon. It's a blunt weapon. And because it's not a blade, it will actually knock out all of the enemies that they kill only wounding them, meaning that they can all be taken as prisoners with pretty much a 99% success chance of not killing them and resulting in you getting prisoners every single time you take on a bandit party or invade a bandit base. The next step after that would be to go to a bandit hideout with at least 10 Azurai footmen that you've trained up. Make sure you specifically select them to take them into the hideout with you. Now all of the bandits that you kill in the bandit hideout will now become your prisoners. And especially in the Azurai area, for some reason the bandits are a really high level and therefore you can sell them for even more gold compared to any other faction apart from the Kuzate. But the Kuzate faction has bows which makes them far more dangerous to deal with. Which is why I recommend specifically coming to the desert to use this method. Also make sure that once you reach the final battle in the bandit hideout, you choose not to duel the enemy bandit boss. Instead say I don't fight duels with brigands and then we'll break into a battle where we can just block the enemy and go ham with our one handed blunt weapons like so and we'll get all of these extra troops as additional prisoners to our army. So each bandit base you'll raid, you'll be getting between 15 and 25 high tier prisoners. And after a few in-game days, the base will respawn. And you can do the same thing again. But now we have two options of how we're going to sell all of these bandit prisoners. Firstly, and the more obvious one that most people know about, is you can go to any tavern and sell them there for a okay amount of gold. However, you can actually achieve literally 10 times the amount of money by instead looking for this specific quest. So as you can see just here on the map at this village, some villagers are going to have this quest where it says landowner needs manual laborers. So if we go and talk to this NPC, okay. and then we say, I heard you need some help with the problem. And he says that he needs workers and perhaps we could find him some prisoners to fulfill the role in the mine. He specifically needs criminals or bandits. You can't use war captives. And he says that he needs 11 of them, but that's going to be random. And it actually doesn't matter how many he needs. Make sure you say, I'll bring you 11 prisoners as soon as possible myself. So if we're going to talk to this NPC again and we say about the task you gave me, we can actually give him the prisoners that we have so far. After you've given him over 11 men, you can say, okay, let's settle up and finish this business. Or you can say, I'm still working on it. And I'd recommend saying that you're still working on it. Because then if I go ahead and leave, we take a closer look at this quest, landowner needs more laborers. You can see that currently I've given him 23 prisoners out of the 11 he asked for. And already he's gonna give me 6,470 gold for those prisoners I've already given him because he's paying 10 times more than market value for each one of them. However, we don't want to finish this quest yet because if you look at time remaining, it says that I've still got another 20 days to give this guy as many prisoners as I can find in Calradia and just carry on giving them to him 
and you can get so much money. So we're going to carry on doing that. If you can't find a bandit hideout, there's another quest you're going to want to be looking out for. Some villagers, you'll also find quests given by NPCs like this one called Bandit Base Near Quidnar. Go ahead and talk to this hey. NPC. I don't think I know you. And now the Bandit Base will be revealed to us. It's just over here on the map. And these will be randomly generated over your campaign. After taking out that Bandit Base, we get another 3,000 deniers in payment. As for the prisoners we took, we can just come back to our friend and give him even more prisoners. I've brought you a few men. Very good, keep them coming. And then we just go ahead and we give him all of the bandit prisoners that we've taken. And there's another 23 guys there. But as you can see, after completing the quest and giving him those 44 prisoners, he's given us 12,000 170 dinars as a reward which is insane money and obviously if you prioritize giving him the highest tier troops then he's always going to give you 10 times their worth but what about all the loot we got from the bandit hideout we still need to sell that too trade all of this stuff that we have let's just trade exactly what we found and as you can see we got a total of 3165 gold just from the loot that we obtained from the encampment. I also kept some of the weapons for myself as well. But wait, there's more. You can actually make even more money by becoming a mercenary as well. And that's one of the things I'm gonna show you when we actually play through what I've just talked about in this walkthrough and this video guide that we're doing today. So drop a like on the video and I hope you guys find it helpful and enjoy it. And once again, Thank you so much for supporting this series. For all the new members, the Patreons, and everyone supporting this series, it's honestly, I, I didn't expect it. So starting out from last episode, we have left Batania and come all the way south to the Azerite area of the map. And it's here that we're going to make ourselves extremely rich, my friends. But just to warn you, next episode is actually going to be a live stream and you can follow along and watch. Link down below in the description. You can press the bell notification so you make sure you don't miss that. But currently we're starting our adventure with 11 Azerai recruits and 8 Azerai tribesmen. But before we leave the town, we're actually going to want to check to see what quests are available. As you can see, Munim the Minter has a quest called Army of Poachers, which is definitely a quest you want to be on the lookout for. So we're going to go and talk to him. I heard you need some help with a problem. Yeah, I've got some problems. A few years ago, I needed some hides for my tannery and I hired some hunters. I didn't ask too many questions about where they got the skins from that they sold me, but there was a bit of a mistake. Now they're banded together as a gang. Now they're trying to muscle me out of the leather business. What can I do for you? I want you to crush the Go to back and give them a lesson they won't forget. Now if you click on this location, you can actually track the location of this settlement. I'll rid you of those poachers myself. You'll be paid well. You can also keep their illegally obtained leather. They skin their beasts in the wood, then go to the village after midnight to stash the hides. The villagers are terrified of them, I believe. If you go to the village late at night, you should be able to track them down. Most poachers would probably run if they were surprised by armed men, but these ones are bold and desperate. Be ready for a fight. So we have one quest there, but there's another quest just here called Gang Leader Needs Weapons. I just want to mention this quickly because it's a great way of making money too. So we're going to go and visit him. Peace to you, stranger. What is your name? My name is Ragnar. One thing you should know is that I make a very good friend and you absolutely do not want me as an enemy. I heard you might need some help. You can help me. Do you want to make some easy money? I need some tools for my private business. Are you interested? What sort of tool? Well, as you know, we're not farmers or artisans. I need five pieces of one-handed axe. Don't mind the quality. Just buy the weapons, bring them back to me, and 2,445 dinars are yours. Got it? So we can say, yeah, sure, we'll do that. Five weapons. Now we get 2,500 gold for doing this quest, which is kind of nuts. So just go to the trade area. And as you can see, there's actually five hatchets here, which are 148 gold each. So that cost me 740 gold just to buy them. And then I get like 1,500 gold profit. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Alternatively, you can go and kill looters or bandits for the axes. Or you can just go to the smithing area. And then once you're here, go to the smelt section on the top left. And as you can see, you can make hatchets. You just need to get the required materials to do so. But we've already got the weapon, so let's go back to our quest giver. Ragnar, thanks again for taking that little matter on for me. 
Best of luck. About the task you gave me. Here's your cargo. Now it's time for payment. Yes, of course. It was a pleasure doing business with you. And there you go. Easiest 2,300 dinars I ever earned in my life. And now we're going to leave the city. We have 11 Azurai recruits and 8 Azurai tribesmen. And we need to level them up, obviously. So we're going to go ahead and head to these two villages. There's actually a quest at this one to the south, so we'll go there first. And recruit some troops. They don't have any to recruit, sadly. And as you remember, for the other quest, Army of Poachers, we actually need to go to the village of Back at night time and kill the poachers. And the village of Back is literally just south of the city. So let's wait here until it is truly night time. And then we can stop. A boy runs out of the village and asks you to talk with the leader of the poachers. The village wants to avoid a fight outside of their homes. Fight the poachers or negotiate. We can have a chat first, there's no harm in that. Well, you're working for that merchant in town, so it's all fine when the rich folk trade in poached skid. But if we do it, our men come to hunt us down. <laughs> well, you do have a point. Go on, we won't bother you anymore. I'm here to do the job I agreed to do, outlaw. Give up or die. Maybe we can come to an agreement. Now, we want to train our men, so that could be pretty helpful to actually just attack them. But let's see if there's an agreement we can come to. Maybe. So, this is a persuasion option if you have a high charisma. And it tells you on the bottom right here your failure rate and your success rate. Critical failure means that you completely fail. We're going to start here where our success chance is high. You're not bad people. You can easily apply your trade somewhere else. Somewhere safe. Success. You might, you might be correct. You had an agreement. Your word is your bond. No matter which side of the law you're on. Ineffective. Ah, we failed. I don't think so. Let's try this one. Ah, we're successful. Fantastic. So you've actually managed to convince him without a fight. You've made your point. We got another Renown as well, which is fantastic. Now this character has a quest where he wants us to train some troops for him. So let's go ahead and visit him. If possible, try not to get them killed. So we've got five borrowed troops to train up for him now as well. Now there's another town just down here called Hiblet. So we're actually going to head over there next and see if we can get another quest. So this character actually needs tool. And tools are actually really easy to find. In fact, most cities over here, you can buy tools from. And I always recommend that whenever you're running around, you just have a stack of tools with you. Currently I have 10 tools and they're valued at 130 gold. Just always make sure you're carrying around a few with you. So whenever you see a quest like this, you can go ahead and talk to the merchant. And then you can say, I want to help you with your problem. He's asking for two loads of tools in 30 days, which is very easy to do. You can literally go to a town and buy them. And we'll say that we can handle this. And then we're going to go back to him because we already have the tools. I've brought your tools. And there you go. He's actually increased relationship to 10. And also other people in the village now like us more as well. He gave us 13 date fruit as payment. Because the villagers like us more, we can actually recruit some of these higher tier soldiers. But we don't want any Azurai Mamluk soldiers anyway, so we're going to go ahead and leave. And now what we want to do is just look around for some looter parties so we can train up our soldiers. That's usually the most effective and safest way of training them. We're just going to head across the map and hopefully we'll find some looters as we sort of walk past these villagers or some other quests potentially as well. Ah, there is actually, who's this? Al Dahan's army. Let's go and chat with him. We can actually become a mercenary for him potentially and earn some influence while we're here helping in his lands by defeating mercenaries and looters. Talk to the army Yours leader. Yours is not a face I know. What is your name, stranger? My name is Ragnar, sir. May I ask your name? I am Adha of Banu Sama, a clan of Azerai. If you ever want the chance for glory, you might consider fighting for me. One day you can tell your grandchildren that you are under my command. Can you tell me anything about the Battle of Pandraic? I wasn't there. I know Unquid has some thoughts about it though. Has he got any quests for us? Yes he has. Okay, so he is a quest to find horses. Which is an incredible quest to do for nobles because it's so easy and they give you so much money for it. He wants Darshi horses and he needs three of them. And he'll pay us about 5,000 gold to do that. Okay, we're definitely going to accept this quest. I will bring you the horses. He said it should cost about 3,000 gold for us to do that. Now if we zoom out, just to the south here, there's actually a village... 
that specifically sells horses. So let's go ahead and speed over there. Oh, desert bandits. Okay, we could kill them, but our party's actually a bit slow for that. Okay, so let's go ahead and recruit some troops if we can. We can get some more Azurai recruits here, so we'll do that. We need the Darshi horses. And they only have two Darshi horses for 1,062 gold. So we'll buy those, but we'll need to go elsewhere for the last one. This character also has a quest, Bandit Base near Ain Balquit. This is a really good quest, so we're definitely going to accept this one too. Let's go ahead and talk Yours to him. Yours is not a face I know. What is your name, stranger? I am Ragnar. Who are you? I heard you need some help, my friend. There's an old ruin, a place that offers a good view of the roads. And yet, it is hard to reach. Needless to say, it attracts bandits. A new gang has moved in and they've been giving hell to the caravans and travellers passing by. So you need someone to deal with these rafscallions. Any bandits there can easily spot and evade a large army moving against them. But if you enter the hideout with a small group of determined warriors, you can catch them unaware. We're going to do it ourselves. Good, I'll, I'll mark the hideout on your map. Thank you so much, Preston. And as you can see, the hideout is now marked on our map just over here. So we're going to go over there and clear these bandits. And hopefully level up all our troops in the process as well. So let's go ahead and run over to this hideout. Passing by a wadai, you see what looks like a camouflaged well to tap the groundwater left behind by rare rainfalls. You see armed men moving about, but as you listen quietly, you hear scraps of conversation about raiding, ransoms, and the best places to waylay travellers. Wait until nightfall to attack. Pretty much the whole day to attack this bandit camp. Oh look, it's um, Althan's armies just passing by too. After waiting for a while, we find a good opportunity to close in undetected. So let's go ahead and attack. Now, I'm actually going to be able to take the borrowed troops on this mission with us, just so they level up. And I'm also going to take my followers who are all using blunt weapons as well, so we can knock out these bandits, which is ideally what we want to do here. Okay, here we are. We're all ready. The peasants have their pitchforks. But we're going to move in slowly and I'm going to try and take out these guys stealthily from a distance. So I can see one guy sitting down here actually completely alone. Let's take him out first. Oh, I just missed the headshot there. No worries. We got him in the neck. He has pretty much no armor, these Azurite troops. So we should be able to take them out pretty effectively. Come on, boys. Take him out. And this guy, please. There we go, he's also down. So I can see another man just down here. Let's take him out. Get Rex son. And see another guy right in the distance there. Oh, we actually hit him. Fantastic. There's two guys coming here. See if this peasant can take him out. And we'll weaken this dude when he runs in. Come on, take them out, troops. There we go, fantastic. We're doing very well here. Seems to be a storage house of where they're hiding all the loot, but there's no one around in here. Let's send our troops in against this one man. <laughs> Get wrecked, son. And I can see a group of three guys over here. And then we'll charge in with the peasants. We should be able to take most of them out. And the nice thing is about using all your peasants here is that they all gain experience as a group. And then there's like one guy in there. I'm just going to send on my army up ahead. And I don't think we've lost a single man, which is really, really effective. Look at that. So these are the final mercenaries. And there's quite a few of them leveled up compared to us. So should I fight them with my army of peasants? The good thing about this would be that I would get them all as prisoners because we're using blunt weaponry. But the bad thing is, is that there's a lot of high level troops here. So in fact, it's probably better if I duel this one guy instead. You, you've cut quite a swathe through my men, damn you. How about we settle this one on one? Very well. I will duel you, let's do this. Ha! Oh! Ah! Die! Die! He's actually quite a skilled swordsman, look at this. Get Rex up. That's right, I've killed your master. Ha ha! Look at them all celebrating over the corpse. I love it. So as you can see, in total, we have wounded eight men. We could have got even more if we did that final battle, but we decided not to. I killed several of them with my bow, 
and some of these guys are using pitchforks. And as you can see, we have 13 prisoners to add into our army. And also, all of our Boro troops are now leveled up, so we can increase their rank. And then we have the Azurai recruits. Now, currently only two are leveled up out of 13. I would actually recommend just leaving them until they're all ranked up as a group because they all gain experience as a group. And if you instead level them separately, then it becomes much harder to level up like one or two recruits compared to having 13 because they all get experience together. So wait until you can level them up all at once instead. And look at all this loot we got. The borrowed troops remaining in your party are now all experienced. You can send them back to Yala of Back. And we'll send them back obviously. And we'll get some money, 2,500 gold, as well as some relationship increase as well. We also have a leather shoulder guard for our companion. Lots of food. In total we have probably about a thousand gold worth of loot there. And we've completed that quest for this villager over here. There's also some looters down there that we can go and get some experience off. Probably round them into this mountain then we can catch them. Here we go. We're not looking for a Let's go ahead and attack and then we'll just send in all our guys at once here. We're going to let all of our troops get the experience. Oh my god, my follower just got killed. <laughs> Jesus, that's not pretty. But I'm just going to spread them out so we don't take any losses and uh, my followers can deal with them one at a time that way. Looters are a real threat, guys. They're no joke. Come on, finish them off, boys. Let's go. Let's go. Should easily be able to level up from this. Fantastic. There we go. And we can also level up all 13 almost of our Azurai recruits. So I'm just going to go ahead and level them up all into the tribesmen like so and we'll just leave that one guy there he'll level up eventually but that is the advantage of leveling up at the same time as a group now if i look on the map i can see there's another horse village up here so i'm going to head over there next and hopefully we'll find some more looters on the way to kill but i really need one more horse for this leader why are these desert bandits chasing me that's a bit strange let's go to this village over here see if we can find those horses Oh, one sec. A courier has a marriage offer for Sven. Let's have a look. A courier arrives from Durthurt, head of the day Murloc. He proposes that his kinswoman Elias marries Sven from your clan. The couple appear to be compatible. Do you accept? I would recommend that whenever a marriage proposal comes up, especially from Durthurt, which is the kingdom of Valadia, quite a powerful kingdom right now in our campaign. You should actually accept this most of the time. There's not really a reason to decline them because then you actually get their family as part of your family. It just makes your clan more powerful. So we're going to accept. On the 12th day of winter, Elias married Sven. Oh my God, they have a new cutscene for it and everything. So our brother is now a married man. So a woman he never met. Fantastic. I'm so happy for you, brother. He looks homeless almost compared to this rich imperial lady. Wow, that's awesome, man. I love the cutscene. I recently got married as well, guys. Who's this guy? So romantic, so beautiful. Just appreciate this moment. The Lady and the Kingdom of Battleborn. We are now brothers in arms. Battle brothers, one might say. We can also buy the final horse that we need here. Let's just quickly buy that. And we can also recruit another recruit. So now if I go to my family tab, you can see we have a new member of the family. Look at that. This is Ailes. I'm going to change her name to Trade Bot. There we go. <laughs> As you can see, she has a good riding ability, which is fantastic for what I have planned. She also has a good charm skill as well, which is very useful for many reasons. And then we have a good trade skill and a good steward skill. So she would be perfect to put in command of a settlement. But also, she has a fantastic trade skill. So what we're going to do is actually make a caravan for her to command later on when I have time. But now if I go back to my quest tab, we need to go back to Odhat, who says that he needs horses for his party. So let's click on his name and then we can see he was last seen near this castle. So let's go and track that location. Oh, he's, he's pretty close, actually. Okay, that's that's great. So let's go ahead and run past these. By the way, if you want to kill desert bandits, they are actually very easy to kill because they're not armoured. 
and also they give you very high prisoner um, costs. So, you know, if you sell them as prisoners, you get a lot of money for that. Let's get these recruits as well. And we can also buy some more horses. These horses are so cheap, by the way. Let's get two pack camels so we can carry even more stuff. And then, hopefully, um, the Lord is near the castle. Now, since we're helping so many people, our charm skill has actually leveled up to 130 already, just by helping these people. Firstly, Meaningful Favours is the best perk out of these two. 10% better chance for double persuasion success. Instant success, basically. Um, relations with powerful settlements NPCs improve over time is also really good. So that's the one we're going for. Now, these two are quite interesting. Obviously, young and respectful, increased relationship gain with the same gender. Being male, this is good just because most um, people in Coradia are male leaders. So you can easily increase your relationship, which helps in so many different ways. However, in Bloom is actually quite good uh, for opposite gender because it allows you to get married faster and increase relationship in that regard. So both are useful. I think I'm going to go for the bottom one for this playthrough. So these two are very important depending on how you want to play the game. Firstly, Firebrand, 50% less influence cost to initiate a kingdom decision. You get very expensive later. And then Flexible Ethics, 30% less influence cost when voting for proposals made by other people. So we're going to go for that. Now let's just go ahead and check um, where Aldhan is. We must have just gone past this castle because you can see our scouting skill is revealing these tracks here. So let's go ahead and follow the army tracks. See where they lead us. Oh, there's actually some other quests here as well, but let's catch up with his army first and give him the horses that we own him. And then we can go back through these villages to do the quests. Come on, we're almost there. It's been a while. It has indeed, but I have your horses. Gives us 4,700 gold. So we literally over double our money for that. And we also increased our charm skill as well. So now let's go back across this bridge. And we want to check out... Oh, Unquid. Okay, so Unquid is actually one of the NPCs we need to talk to for the main quest. Investigate Neritus's Folly. Talk to nobles 3 out of 10. And Unquid is the other one I want to talk to. In fact, we might actually become a mercenary for his clan too. Stop there, stranger. I bid you peace. At least until I find out who you are anyway. My name is Ragnar, sir. May I ask your name? I am Unquid, Sultan of the Asurai. I am Lord of Quidas and Sanala. I'm always looking for good fighters. If you ask about me, I suspect you'll be told that I take good care of my men. Can you tell me anything about the Battle of Pandra? It was a tragedy that gnawed at the roots of the greatest families of Caradia, even us, so far away from the battle. We heard the Empire was making war on the Sturgeon, or maybe it was the other way around. I thought that we had no stake in the quarrel, but Nimir, a fiery young hero from Banisaran asked me for permission to take some young warriors eager for glory. The Empire had left us alone for a while, and Neretes was offering silver for men. So I thought, why not? Let them help the Empire. Ah, I should have known. The best course with wars is to have as little to do with them as you possibly can. So Nimir went and fought and won glory, but also a number of men killed, especially those of the Banu Quill, and he became boastful and arrogant. And then, well, that is the beginning of the great feud between Sarians and Quills. But the rest of the story, I should perhaps leave for someone else. Thank you. So there is also a feud between the different Azurai clans as well. I heard you need some help with a problem. I don't have any service of strangers. I work with only lords of the realm and loyal mercenary. Okay, so we could actually become a mercenary. There's something else I'd like to discuss. Huh, you have piqued my interest. What do you have to say? So we need clan tier 2 to become his vassal, but I definitely don't want to do that. Right now, we only want to be a mercenary so we can get influence in this area while we're doing loads of quests. My sword is yours for the right sum. You want some mercenary work, eh? Well, we are glad to take fighters, whether they seek glory or gold. 
If you fight for us, you will receive a hundred and ninety deniers. Whether you defeat a party of our enemies or any other significant deed. Right, I accept. Good. I'll have my men write up a simple contract, cause I cannot read. On behalf of the Azurai Sultanate, I welcome you. May you put your sword to good use against our enemies. You can count on me. As for now, your enemies are my enemies and your honor is my honor. And now on the map, I can actually see Adwan's army just here. No matter where I am on the campaign, I can see he's grouping an army together. If I join his army and fight with him, I'll get influence. Now, the way we'll get paid for our mercenary contract works like this, just so you understand how to make the most out of this. Firstly, the total gold that will get paid and that a faction will offer you will be usually based on how rich they are. In this case, we get paid 190 gold per five influence that we have, and we get paid each day. So for example, if we have 25 influence, 25 divided by 5 is 5, so 5 times 190 gold per day, so 950 gold per day in total. If you hover over the finance section, it will actually show you under daily change that we're currently getting plus 950 for our mercenary contract. However, each day you lose 20% of your current influence. This means that you must actively build up and gain influence by doing positive things in order to earn more money from your mercenary contract. Now to earn more influence, the fastest method is to kill enemies you're at war with, like enemy armies, bandits, destroying bandit hideouts, gifting troops or prisoners to castles, joining a noble's army to get influence for every day that you're in it, the amount of influence you get per day can also be increased based on what perks you have as well. Next, Ragnar ventured across the lands battling looters to level his troops and doing a few noble deeds as he went to help the Azurai people, until he found a bandit hideout. So now we can use a really solid strategy of getting prisoners. So we're going to go ahead and look at our party. As you can see, I've got loads of Azurai footmen now that I leveled up from the Azurai recruits into Azurai tribesmen, and then we got loads of Azurai footmen. So now I'm gonna take these guys into this bandit hideout over here, and we're gonna go ahead and raid it. Make sure your followers only have blunt weapons that they can use, and then we're gonna go ahead and wait until nightfall to attack. So we're gonna take the max amount of Azurai footmen that we can take into this battle. I'm also gonna take Sven in as well. Begin the assault, brothers. So you can see everyone has their maces out and we are ready to fight. So let's just go ahead and tell everyone to charge. And then we can just pretty much sit back and let them do all the work. Maybe we'll try and poke a few people, but really they should be able to take everyone out themselves. Get knocked out some. I'm going to take my sword out just in case things get hairy. But to be honest, these troops are tier 3 now. So it should be pretty easy of wiping out any bandit camps. I'm going to get the attention of these guys in this cave here. Oh, I accidentally killed one. My bad. Really, we want to keep our men kind of grouped up here. So they don't spread out and take losses. Charge, men. There we go. Get wrecked some. Now we're coming out of this secret cave exit. We've got two guys down here killing out the stragglers. We've taken everyone out successfully. And now we have what is probably a fair battle against all of these troops, as you can see. Now we have a choice here. We can either duel this guy or fight army versus army, which I would actually recommend doing. And the reason for that is we would get almost double the amount of prisoners. So let's go ahead. I don't fight duels with brigands. And then we can engage them all in combat. I'm just going to block here, try and get as many attention as I can. And then I'll let my men just hammer them to death because I don't want to kill them with my sword. Finish him, brother. Well done. There we go. They're all dead. You have won the battle. So as you can see, we got 17 prisoners. We wounded 17 of them. We only killed one, which I think was the one guy a headshot with a bow and arrow. So there you go. We can add these 17 sellable prisoners to our party. And they're pretty expensive. They actually sell for quite a lot of money. Let's say done. We're over the prisoner limit. That's fine. Take all their stuff and we are good. We've also increased our relationship with nearby notables and we've increased our influence because we are actually a mercenary 
as well. And now obviously we're going to find somewhere to sell these prisoners. But as you may have noticed, we've accumulated a bunch of money in this playthrough so far. And now we're going to be setting up caravans and a form of passive income for, you know, continuing to play the game and raise a real army and become a mercenary with a faction at war where we can just start to really increase our renown drastically. So next edited episode is going to be a guide on how to make caravans and make passive income. And the next episode um, just of the playthrough is going to be focusing on Neritus's folly and also just being a general mercenary in a live stream. So you can find a link to that video down below in the description. Thank you so much for watching so far, guys. And thanks again for all the wonderful support and all the new channel members. I really appreciate it, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.